Growing up, there were always whispers about the family curse. It was a tale passed down through generations, a dark undercurrent in our otherwise ordinary lives. I never took it seriously, until that fateful day when I found myself at the epicenter of the unsettling events that had plagued my family for centuries. It all began innocently enough with my curiosity about our family history. I had always been the inquisitive type, and the stories of my ancestors, often shrouded in mystery, had always fascinated me. My grandmother, in her old age, was the one who seemed to hold the key to our family's secrets. One summer evening, I sat at her feet, as she sifted through an ancient wooden chest filled with yellow documents and faded photographs. She spoke in hushed tones, revealing tales of ancestors who have been involved in bizarre rituals and strange occurrences. The more she talked, the more I felt an eerie connection to those long dead relatives. But it was a peculiar daguerreotype photograph that truly sent shivers down my spine. It depicted a man named Edward Fischinum, dressed in an archaic suit and holding a cane. His eyes seemed to pierce through time itself, and my grandmother muttered that he was the source of our family's troubles. My grandmother's voice grew hushed as she recounted the curse that had plagued our family. Edward Fischinum, a distant relative, had been a practitioner of the occult, rumored to have made a pact with dark entities in his quest for immortality. He had disappeared mysteriously, leaving behind a legacy of fear. As the days passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Strange occurrences began to unfold. The lights in our family home flickered inexplicably, and I often heard faint whispers in empty rooms. It was as though the spirits of the past were trying to communicate with me. One night, I decided to revisit the old family photographs and documents. As I carefully examined Edward Fischinum's daguerreotype, I felt an overwhelming compulsion to learn more about him. I searched for any mention of his name, delving into dusty family records and faded letters. My research led me to an ancient museum in Northampton, where the curator reluctantly agreed to let me examine the Cane of Eternity, a peculiar artifact said to be linked to Edward's dark practices. It radiated an ominous energy, and the curator shared chilling tales of its origins in Mineral Hills, the very town where my family had lived. I couldn't ignore the connection between the cane and the curse that had haunted my family for generations. Armed with protective spells and ancient incantations, I returned to the museum one moonless night, determined to confront the malevolent entity that had tormented us. As I recited the incantations, the cane began to vibrate and the room seemed to come alive with otherworldly energy. Suddenly, a shadowy figure materialized before me, its form shifting and contorting. It let out a bone-chilling scream, and I felt a cold hand reaching out toward me. With a heart full of resolve, I thrust the silver knife I had brought into the cane, piercing it through. The entity's agonized howl filled the air before it dissolved into a swirling mist. The malevolent energy lifted, leaving the room in stillness. Exhausted but victorious, I knew that I had taken the first step in breaking the curse that had plagued my family for centuries. As I left the museum, I couldn't help but wonder if this was truly the end or if the darkness would return someday. In the weeks that followed, the strange occurrences in our family home ceased, and an eerie peace settled upon us. It was as though the past had finally released a script on our lives, and we were free from the curse of Edward Fischina. But the tale of our family's dark history still lingers in my mind. I can't help but wonder if the past is truly behind us or if it will rear its head once more. Only time will tell, but for now, I am determined to cherish the newfound peace that has eluded us for so long.